is up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2023 mitsubishi outlander phev courtesy of younger mitsubishi in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so we are in this one today because this is an all new model an all new outlander for the 2023 model year being the phev version and so i wanted to hop in this one by the way PHEV stands for plug-in hybrid electric vehicle so it's got both a gasoline engine and it's got two electric motors paired up to it as well so you don't have to worry about that EV anxiety for when you go on a vacation with your family and you're like where's the next charging port are we gonna make it because you got the gasoline powered engine as well so you could just fill it up with gas if you wanted to so not only that you also get America's best warranty with all Mitsubishi's for that matter being five years 60,000 mile bumper to bumper 10 years 100,000 miles on the powertrain and if you were to go with younger Mitsubishi here in Hagerstown, they will actually also give you a double powertrain warranty meeting. 20 years, 200,000 miles on the powertrain, which is insane. But ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always... Let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2023 Outlander PHEV ES starting at $39,845 SE for $42,145 SE Tech for $42,145 SEL, which actually is the one we are in today, starting at $45,445 SEL Touring, same price actually, $45,445 SEL Premium for $45,445 yet again and the 40th anniversary edition going for $49,995. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder plus two electric motors, of course, paired up to that, giving you a combined 248 horsepower, 332 pound-feet of torque sent to all four wheels because, of course, Mitsubishi's legendary rally-inspired all-wheel control system, which is actually a four-wheel drive system, but incredibly good in the snow and dirt and things like that. Power sits to the ground through a CVT 0 to 60 time, approximately 6.5 seconds according to Motor Trend, with a combined MPGs at 64 MPGEs is what it's called. And actually, Actually, fun fact for you on all the electrified statistics for this thing you can actually get 38 miles of pure EV driving in the Outlander PHEV DC fast charge is going to charge it from 0 to 80 percent in only 38 minutes 240 volt takes six and a half hours 120 volt meaning your traditional wall outlet at your house is going to take 16 hours so maybe just plug it overnight there and total driving range comes in at 420 miles so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test in this thing wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes there is a little circular dial located just behind the shifter that's going to give you normal power eco tarmac gravel snow and mud adjusting things like the shift points throttle response and the steering sensitivity so now that we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and put the outlander phev here to the test all right let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed from a standstill and go baby i like the sound Yeah, that's fine. You're not going to have any issues there. Definitely plenty of an acceleration to merge you onto the highway. It's not the very quickest thing in the world, but having said that, those power numbers that have rambled off were dang good, especially for the segment. So again, you're not going to have any issues merging onto the highway. This thing is plenty quick. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 13.8 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13 inch ventilated rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, that comes in at 131 feet since there's nobody behind us. Yeah, that's really good, actually. I like the braking feel on this thing. So a lot of times with electric vehicles, if there's any kind of electric motor, sometimes the braking feel is a little bit wonky, a little bit dead spot sometimes. But honestly, with this, that was great. At least coming from a little bit of a break there at 55 miles per hour, it instantly brings you to a stop. So I don't mind the braking feel on this thing. So anyways, the touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars, of course. As far as ride quality goes, it's been great in my short little test drive here today. I will say Hagerstown has some pretty darn nice roads, but having said that, 
again, it's been absorbing the road imperfections quite nice, nicely so far in my short test drive, so I've had no issues there. As far as steering feel goes, it does tend to lean a little bit on the looser side of things, which is to be expected for this kind of vehicle. So it doesn't bother me too much, but wouldn't have minded if they firmed up that steering feel just a little bit. As far as cabin noise goes, this is the perfect example. We're going 50 miles per hour right now. There isn't a whole lot of exterior wind noise coming into the cabin. You do have a, a nice little bit of a noise when you really get on it. Like I just mentioned with that acceleration, you kind of hear the electric motors going at it or whatever the case, but I like the sound of the acceleration. I'll say that, but as far as Wind noise, there's nothing. As far as road noise, there's a little bit, but it's not that bad. It's like average for the segment, I would say. As far as visibility goes, I can see 100% perfectly fine out the back if I adjusted my mirror a little bit there, and now I can see even better out the back, so no issues there. Did wanna also mention for all trim levels, you get rain sensing windshield wipers, assisting with forward visibility. So whenever the Outlander detects any kind of mist or rainfall or snow, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So it's kind of like automatic headlights, just one less thing you gotta worry about there. So I love that, but anyways, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. All right, you guys, so here she is, the new 2023 Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV on her 27 degree day here in Hagerstown. Finished in mercury gray, by the way, in case you were curious of our exterior color name. But as always, let's go ahead and take a look at the VIN. Let's see where this thing is actually made. First character of the VIN does indicate the letter J. So this one is built and assembled in Japan. So JDM SUV, gotta love it. So let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Of course, you got that Outlander lettering spelled out horizontally on the very front of the hood. I always like that look, very high end look. Full LED headlights though to the side. So not just the low beam, but the high beam as well. You definitely don't always get that. So added illumination at night there with LED daytime running lights, of course. LED fog lights down below that can be had with the SE trim leveling up if you wanted that. Of course, going back to those headlights, they do come with the automatic feature, meaning they're gonna turn on automatically for you when it starts to get dark at night. But also automatic high beams actually come standard on every single trim level across the board. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams so definitely a very nice convenience feature there and of course you got some aluminum trim found on the bottom portion of that front bumper there as well so overall very nice looking front end that's basically identical to the non-PHEV version of the Outlander which is very nice looking as well of course so Anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the Outlander here, aluminum roof rails found all the way to the top. Gotta love that. Also, you got that floating roof line towards the uh, back there on the C-pillar, kind of separating the roof from the rest of the body of the vehicle. It's pretty cool. Chrome belt line molding, of course. Body color power adjustable side mirrors will come standard. They will come with LED integrated turn signals then as well, and they will be heated on the SE trim level and up, but also power folding on the SE trim level and up in case you wanted that, so that's pretty cool. Then take a look down at the wheel setup, 18 by seven inch aluminum alloys for the ES, but essentially all other trim levels are going to get 20 by eight inch aluminum alloys varying in design slightly, but I did want to mention perhaps the most differentiating factor between the PHEV and the non-PHEV Outlander is going to be the badging found on the front door, so. Big old badge you found on this front door is it says plug-in hybrid EV. So if you're ever wandering onto a Mitsubishi lawn on a Sunday and you're looking for a PHEV, that's how you're gonna be able to distinguish the difference. So anyways, it pretty much rounds out the side profile here. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, body colored shark fin antenna found all the way to the top there. Rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, of course. You got the rear window wiper fixated to the rear glass. Also, you got some SAWC badging found in that rear glass as well, meaning all wheel control system, the rally inspired all wheel control system built for rally racing in the snow and the dirt. Gotta love that. LED tail lights, of course, coming standard for all trim levels for added illumination at night. Once again, you got the PHE EV badging found on that rear tailgate there, a little bit of silver accenting towards the bottom bumper, but all the way underneath there actually is a single exhaust outlet tucked away underneath on the driver's side there. So having said that, again, not sure if this is going to work because this is a hybrid, but I do believe you guys know what we have to try to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. 
All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the Outlander, when it comes to opening the rear tailgate, it is a manual tailgate for the ES, but all other trim levels besides that bottom trim is gonna get a hands-free power tailgate. So if your hands are full of groceries or kids, it's gonna automatically open up for you after you kick your foot underneath of it. So that's pretty convenient. There's of course button on the tailgate, key fob, things like that. But once opened up, cargo capacity behind that third row, because I didn't mention it yet, the Outlander is a three row SUV that comes standard. So behind the third row, it's gonna come in at 11.7 cubic feet. Behind the second row, 33.5 cubic feet. And with all rows folded, 79.7 cubic feet then. So that is, that last number is definitely respectable. Behind that third row, it's not all that much. So I think most people will probably just leave the third row down. But anyways, cargo lighting can be found back there. There's also grocery bag hooks back there. Big fan of seeing that. You got some tie down anchors and there's actually an AC hookup back there as well. So if you wanted to maybe charge up a drill or something, you, you can do that. So that's pretty cool. But anyways, then making our way up to the third row legroom coming in at 18.7 inches. So literally, I think unusable, maybe even for kids because because here's why my Ford Mustang GT second row it's a two plus two seater came in at 29 inches even I think it was so 18.7 I don't know how anybody's gonna fit back there quite honestly but it does get better in the second row because that's gonna bump that up to 38.1 inches now that's respectable and that's 100% usable for reference I mean even six feet tall this is how much space I had back there of course you got some rear ventilation that's gonna be found kind of right in front of the rear passengers there you got a rear USB-C and USB USB A charging ports for all trim levels as well. Heated second row seats are going to come standard on a 40th anniversary edition, but then optional for the SEL trim levels. So we do have that option. So spoil the rear passengers a little bit. And I like seeing the rear window sunshades actually as well. So if you have a newborn and you don't want the sun blinding them, maybe sitting in a parking lot or something, then you got the rear window sunshade. So big fan of that as well. But anyways, then making our way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating for the ES, power adjustable synthetic surfaces for the SE and SE tech, leather seating for the SEL trim level and up, heated seats for the SEL trim level and up, memory settings for up to two different drivers and passengers for the SEL trim level and up. So Mercedes does that, but most manufacturers won't give you memory settings for the passenger seat as well. So wanted to mention that that's pretty cool. But overall, as far as seat comfort goes, it was plenty fine. I will say I like the design of the seats as well with the quilted checkered or diamond pattern that uh, Audi, I think, pioneered doing that. So I'm a big fan of the design. As far as seat comfort goes, it was okay. So definitely not going to have any issues on long road trips or anything like that. But then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the SE trim level and up. And the 10 to 2 grips are actually quite thick. And since I haven't mentioned it yet, what are the paddle shifters for? If you press that left paddle shifter five times that's going to give you the most regenerative braking available for the Outlander PHEV and if you press the right paddle shifter essentially that takes you completely out of that one pedal drive mode so left paddle shifter is going to put you in it it won't bring you to a complete stop but it'll get you pretty dang close so that's what the paddle shifters are for just like the Honda Insight but so then making our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your Mitsubishi logo on the top lock unlock and of course that button to uh, pop the rear tailgate there but it is all keyless entry with a push button start for the SE trim level and up. So all I'm going to do here, simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the air vents there. And so once started up, gauges look dang good. And so it is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. And like I said, I love it. And you can actually completely customize the look to a couple different readouts. There's an option called change meter view, which basically you can toggle between your standard gauges, giving you the speedometer on the right. There's digital speedometer. But then if you press it again, it gives you this very unique look that you only see elsewhere, like on the Nissan road, because they're partner with Mitsubishi, of course, but it's such a dang cool look. That's what I would personally leave it in because it's like nothing else that I have seen. So big, big fan of the gauges. Outside temperature, of course, telling us that we're in the 20s today. How many miles you have left until you hit empty and so on. Basically everything you could possibly want on the gauges up there. But so then making our way to overall interior quality, there is a power panoramic sunroof for the 40th anniversary edition. It's going to be optional on the SEL trim levels. Overhead sunglass holder is also going to come standard. Homeland controls are going to be available for the SEL trim. It's going to come standard on the 40th anniversary edition. Tri-zone climate control coming standard on the SEL trim level and up. 
However, dual zone climate control coming standard on all the other trims basically. Wireless phone charger is going to be standard on the SE trim level and up. That's going to be found just in front of the shifter there. It's going to be rubberized, so like that so it doesn't slide around. Like I said previously, overall interior quality was pretty dang good. Just because of the quilted leather, it actually continues from the seats onto the doors as well. You got contrast stitching. And a lot of times I'll critique other cars for having a matte gray plastic around the shifter and stuff, but Mitsubishi actually did pretty darn good with this. It's kind of like a texturized silver finish around the shifter and a gloss black finish which i love as well both of them high end look so big fan of that but anyways just in front of the shifter you have a couple more charging ports 12 volt power outlet behind the shifter you have dual cup holders and within the center armrest actually not a ton of space considering the size of this suv but it should be able to get the job done but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen because there's going to be a couple of them so for the es trim level you're going to get an eight inch color touchscreen display but for the se trim level and up you're going to get what you're looking at which is a nine inch color touchscreen display either way you get bluetooth and audio streaming android auto apple carplay for the nine inch screen you actually get a factory navigation system that comes standard as well can adjust your climate control settings up there as well as your radio information so when it comes to the sound systems six speakers essentially is going to come standard on all trim levels but the 40th anniversary edition and then there is a nine speaker Bose sound system that the 40th anniversary edition is going to get and by the way that sound system is optional on the SEL trims and we do have that option yet again so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out our nine speaker Bose sound system that we have with us here today <laughs> That's actually pretty darn good. So plenty of bass, and usually Bose crushes it with that. Clarity was pretty darn good as well, and like I always say, I've had Bose sound systems in my cars before, my Infiniti G35 Coupe back in the day, and it never failed me, it never broke after 140,000 miles that I traded that thing in. But yeah, Bose sound system, it's very reputable, plenty of clarity, plenty of bass, so I like that sound system in the Outlander. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least, is when you do put the Outlander PHEV in reverse, it's gonna make that kind of uh, noise to let other people know on the outside that you're in reverse because this is an electric vehicle, so gas engine probably Probably isn't going to be on when you're in reverse but it's going to give you a rear view camera coming standard and then that bird's eye view that you're looking at as well that's going to be optional letting you know what is completely all around you which is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start the 2023 outlander is an iihs top safety pick plus which is the very highest designation given by iihs so that pretty much says it all right there front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard blind spot warning with lane changes assist driver attention alert forward collision mitigation system with the pedestrian detection lane departure warning reverse automatic braking rear cross traffic alert and then rear parking sensors as well so you don't hit anything then if you were to go with the se trim level and up that is going to add to that adaptive cruise control with stop and go and then also front parking sensors to add on to the rear ones so Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Outlander PHEV, I love that you can get 38 miles of pure electric driving without it being a full EV. Because like I said earlier, if you're on vacation and you're not familiar with where you're at and you don't know if you're going to be able to make it to a charging station, since it's not a full EV, you have the ability to completely leave it uncharged and just operate off of gasoline rather than having to charge it up. So that is the beauty of hybrids. So you want to get better MPGs, but you don't want to worry about a full EV. This is the kind of thing that you want to look at. But 0 to 60 is pretty darn quick as well. 6.5 seconds. There's nothing wrong with that. One pedal mode. I love that. I always love that in electric vehicles and hybrids. So again, just press the left paddle shifter a bunch of times. And essentially, you got the one pedal mode. Won't come to a full stop. But it comes pretty dang close. So I like that. As far as room for improvement goes, I can really only think of two things, honestly. And that is the third row is completely useless in this thing even for children it is possible to move up that second row a little bit but still the third row is going to be pretty dang tight and then i also think some multicolor ambient lighting would look pretty dang good in this as well but anyways let me know what you guys think of the new outlander phev in the comment section below and that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media stuff if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know i will see you guys all in the next video
Stay gold. Stay gold.